Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. We're here at EMC World, day two, we're live in Las Vegas. This is our fourth year at EMC World. We're bringing you wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'd like to extract the signal from the noise, and Andrew Wilson is here. He's the Senior Managing Director uh, at Accenture, uh, really focusing also on the Navitaire business as well. That's part of his portfolio. Andrew, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Dave. Good to be here. It's great to be EMC World as well. Yeah, it's quite an event. You have 15, 16,000 people. It just continues to grow, a lot of buzz. Accenture is an organization that has really you know, global reach, unmatched capabilities. I mean, there are very few companies who have your industry knowledge, your depth, you've got a you know, phenomenal reputation. So talk about, let's start with sort of what you're doing here, why are you here at EMC World? Well, Accenture delivers high performance to organizations, to government agencies. And it delivers high performance through technology, consulting, and outsourcing. Uh, my role is to run the infrastructure for Accenture, which touches technology, consulting, and outsourcing from the design and the transformation of technology through to the operation of the ongoing service. And we do that to transform businesses and we deliver complex change programs which carry a business to new levels of operation, leveraging what technology can now deliver. Yeah, and your business is largely applying technology to create a business capability. Um, I often think in such a business as yours, the, the, you're, well, you're certainly infrastructure agnostic. Um, in, in many cases, you know, infrastructure should be irrelevant to the customer uh, from, in terms of what they see. They don't want to deal with infrastructure, but you're in the infrastructure business, so it's not irrelevant. Talk it's, about that dissonance. Well, well, first of all, it needs to be seamless and it needs to be invisible, but it is absolutely mission critical and strategic. And I think what's happened recently is infrastructure has become more visible through cloud and through virtualization and through the consumerization of IT. And so now clients and customers are more aware of infrastructure than ever before. The demands they're placing on it are different. So used to, in the old days, we were running back office operations, we were running institutions, and the infrastructure, as you say, was, was invisible. Now it has to be out there and it's enabling some of the most rapid business change we've ever delivered. And so the reason I want to run infrastructure is I think it is the most strategic, the most vital, and the most vibrant at the moment because it's, the, the change is pervasive and that's what we're here talking that's about a, today. That's an, that's an interesting premise. So cloud actually increases complexity in a way. It does. I think for a service provider that's running mission critical, highly available services, it's vitally important to get not just the technology right, but the entire IT operating model. Classic legacy technology had a little bit more room for error. You could get away more with more, but with cloud, it is the potential for an anarchy if you run it in a non-industrial way. So your command control, management, and upgrade processes, your configuration, and, and all of those important elements as a cloud-based provider need to be rock solid along with the technology you're running on if you're going to deliver services that you can run mission critical production on. So talk about Navitaire a little bit. Well, you know, what's its mission and, and its focus? Navitaire is a great example of a business enabling cloud to deliver high performance outcomes. So Navitaire runs flight operations and reservation systems for low cost airlines. But low cost does not mean small. Low cost airlines are looking for a very rapid solution, a very flexible and innovative solution. They're also looking not to encumber themselves with the technology that the systems are running on. They want to buy a virtualized environment, they want to buy cloud, and they want to buy by the transaction. So cloud is very well placed to deal with the responsiveness and the configurability that the airlines demand. The airlines will use uh, Navitaire to enable their entire end-to-end -end business operation. So they will, uh, they will allow their end-user customers to book through the web, browse and book through the web. They will then check in through the web or check in through kiosks directly linked to Navitaire systems. They'll tag bags, they'll board, and the flights will be dispatched all through the central Navitaire engine. If the engine performs badly or isn't there, the entire airline stops. Yeah, so to what, what can you tell us about the customers? I mean, types of customers, if you can name names, that'd be great, but uh, share with us sort of the profile. 
The customer, the customers are great. It's 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 an industry which is very challenging and demanding. It's very visible. Any form of disruption is immediately on television. It's very competitive, and I'm cautious about naming names because of that competition. Mm -hmm. But the competitiveness they have, the sales they run, and the very very flexible systems they need are why they come to Navitir. But as a as a set of businesses, they're typically very very rapid and agile and need to respond quickly and they need to change quickly. And so we have to to move and change faster than you perhaps would find with either a financial service institution or even a retailer. So can we unpack the infrastructure a little bit? Can you give us a peek under the tent? What would we see? Look. You'd see uh, a, a strong collaboration between EMC and Accenture in a transformed Navitair solution. We run on EMC technology in terms of VMAX. We run with VMware because we're a highly virtualized farm. We own and run it, so it has um, cloud. Uh, it's not in public cloud because of the security and um, other regulatory requirements. And the clients demand very high availability and a lot of resilience and disaster recovery capabilities which are very sophisticated. And for that reason, we've chosen to run it as a industry aligned vertical stack, which gives us the control we need, but with still the flexibility of cloud-like characteristics. But it's multi-tenant. It's definitely multi-tenant. Uh, it's multi-tenant in three major production locations serving 30 countries. And it is um, configurable in that different parts of the infrastructure are shared to a greater or lesser extent. The EMC enablement is most shared because storage is shared. Um, based on the nature and scale and size of the airline, there's a different combination of physical and virtual servers. But one of the most innovative parts of Navitair is that the airline's business and sales behavior will change very rapidly. So their requirements for capacity and as a transaction engine will be very different one week to the next. We can stand up different combinations of server to allow a client to enter a very, very busy uh, sales period when they will promote through social media, and they'll promote through Twitter and Facebook, some very, very aggressive discounting, and they'll want to sell their catalog and their inventory very quickly. Yet, in normal operations, they may only need half or a quarter of the, of the physical scale that the sale will give them. And so we flex and accommodate that. And we do it though without downtime and we have to do it in a way which is very sensitive to the fact that we're enabling the entire business, as I said. So you mentioned it's not a public cloud. That's a, that's a taboo word I would imagine in your customer base. It is. I, I, I think cloud characteristics, uh, it, it's, it's hybrid. I think it needs to be, uh, I mean, we certainly at the moment could not take it public for that reason. Um, and we don't need to, and we're very, we're very confident in, and I need to deliver control and upgrade. And I think some of the things we're seeing here at EMC World about software-defined data center, the next level of virtualization, will, will give me the roadmap I need for the future. So what will that enable you? I mean, I get you know, the whole software-defined storage. I think it's great for EMC. They're going to be able to you know, integrate faster, and it'll you know, potentially cut their cost. They'll be able to get to market faster from a customer. What does that do for you? it means I can respond more quickly to a very rapidly changing market. I've had to upgrade because of some stabilization work I needed. Every single production environment, every single uh, highly data analytical reporting environment which the clients run, and disaster recovery environments. And I need to do that while still delivering service. I need to provide and provision rapidly changing development environments so that they can take the new functionality which the development team continues and continuously delivers. And then I need to be able to look at new levels of virtualization in areas of the infrastructure which I think classically have not benefited from some of the fault tolerance of the storage. So certainly the network and firewalls and load balancers. And so virtualization in that space, virtualization of the whole data center I think is the future because it's going to allow me to scale the whole infrastructure, not just storage and compute in a linear manner, which I think is powerful. What about, how homogeneous are you? I mean, one of the things that people observe about an Amazon or a Google they're highly homogeneous. They've got you know, a set of standards that they, they build to. As a service provider, is that level of homogeneity something that you strive for, or are you like a lot of server service providers where you got a little bit of a lot of different you know, things? Navite is a good example of relatively homogeneous in that it is a set of configured environments that follow standards, and we have to do that because we wanted to deliver 
the highest levels of availability. And that comes with management and control protocols, which, um, as I said earlier, if we stray from that, we start to get into problem areas. So I'm proud to say that we configure based on rigorous standard. That improves the speed we can configure with. And it also improves our ability to stand things up and move things around much more quickly and responsively. Uh, because look, things look and feel the same. They didn't look and feel as much the same before we used EMC. We had a more anarchic environment that had grown up more um, uh, organically as, as clients had grown. And so this industrialization intervention using the capabilities of cloud has been very important. So did you sweep that? Essentially, or you know, Did we lar sweep largely, it? or I mean, we um, I think we uh, we certainly cleaned up, and I think we we created a consolidation and a convergence in code, in releases, in environments, and in configuration parameters, and that it was that was healthy, and I'm I'm I don't mind saying that we had to come from a way behind to deliver at the next level of industrialization that we now do. Okay, so you did that leapfrog yeah. you know, effect, and that's paying off in, in, in business terms. It's paying off in business terms. The thing is operable, it's maintainable, the cost of ownership is good. Uh, I can see um, very much improved response times, I can see improved failover times when clusters fail over on databases. I can see uh, batch improvement. I can see um, complex analytical queries running 60, 70, 80, 90% faster. That delivers business value and cost to serve uh, improvements all over the enterprise. What about this notion of converged infrastructure? Is that something that you're doing, you're looking at, you're, you've, you've chosen not to go down that path? No, I think converged infrastructure for the right form of work, for the right type and selection of client, it, it is going to be a, a vital part of our armory and then and our tools and assets. I don't think at the moment uh, with cloud, and with all the various on and off premise solutions and everything as a service, there is a single solution that meets all workloads for every scale and type of industry and operation. I think where a service provider can help is have very clear guidelines as to what type of workload and what shape of workload should be put where, in terms of cloud, in terms of on-premise, in terms of security, in terms of virtualization versus physical. And I think some of the new capabilities we're seeing here are going to enrich that tool set, and so we have to upgrade to say, well now you have a different set of options, client, and we would recommend this by way of your production, your development, your DR workloads, et cetera. So, obviously you have large, well-established service companies that are competitors. Is Amazon becoming a competitor? Uh, I wouldn't have said so at the moment. Uh, we operate transforming businesses and we operate transforming whole enterprises. Amazon, I think, provides an important set of solutions and we see their use. I do challenge the public cloud in terms of its depth and range of services and I typically see us providing wrappers around those in terms of security and DR and resilience, et cetera. But I think Amazon are an important part of the ecosystem. The ecosystem is characterized by a significant number of cloud providers. Adoption is different in different parts of the world. Uh, I think it's a little bit more advanced in North America. I think we'll see a catch up in Iala. And I think Amazon and other players will be an important part of the mix. I also think about concentration risk. As a service provider of mission critical services, uh, I don't want to put all my bets in one place. I want to give every client uh, equal focus when recoveries occur, and so there's a, there's a workload allocation and balancing model which I think is going to become ever more important in the future as more and more of the fabric of the industry is enabled by infrastructure. So Amazon, um, I mean it's a kind of the poster child for public cloud, but so there's, it sounds like there's a place for it in your ecosystem uh, for the right workload, for the, yeah, for the right uh, there's situation. there's very much a place for it. For it and there's a, it's an arrow in the quiver as I often like to say. Uh, okay, I want to come back to EMC. What do you want to see more of? What's on their to-do list uh, you know, as a partner and as a, as a customer and a, and a provider to your industry? Uh, to the immediate Navitaire industry, their to-do list is to give us a roadmap for uh, virtualizing the entire data center. It's to give us new ways and, and new cost points of supporting infrastructure. I think they're knocking it out of the park on availability. Uh, since they uh, helped us transform our production environments, we've seen no downtime as a result of storage. That's a very, very important fact. They've enabled 34 years plus of continuous elapsed production environment operation in, the, in a few months alone. That's powerful. So um, they need to keep doing that. They also need to continue to evolve their ability to operate services with us. I use them for staff augmentation because these new skills won't immediately be in my organization. And so EMC can help me by augmenting the staff base and helping us with these, the rapid adoption of these new technologies so we can bring them to clients more quickly. 
Excellent. All right, another happy customer. <laughs> um, applying technology, creating business action. Um, of course, EMC's not done, <laughs> as we heard. That's good. It means uh, there's a lot of room for, for innovation. And uh, Andrew, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was really a pleasure having you. Great Thank to you meet Dave. you. Thank you. Thanks good for watching, to be here. everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from EMC World in Las Vegas, day two. We'll be right back.